Hey guys, uh, it's a pleasure to come to you today and we're here just talking casually about uh, the role of an executive pastor and an executive assistant and we're so happy to have Pastor Andrew and Kathy with us now on staff. They've been with us now for almost a month and so we just wanted to sit down kind of in a relaxed environment and, and have a conversation and let you know um, what's going on here at New Life Church. So I will start by saying this. Some people have asked, why do we need an executive assistant or an executive pastor? In fact, another question would be, what, what is an executive pastor or an executive assistant? I don't find those words in the Bible. Well, my first response to that would be, I don't find the words youth pastor or children's pastor in the Bible. It's just not there. Um, so, uh, but it is there um, because as our friend Kerry Newhoff says, structure is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so really what we're talking about here is changing the structure of our church to enable it to continue to move forward and grow. Um, there's the story that I often share uh, in Exodus 18 about Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. And he comes to Moses and he says, Moses, he's, he's watching Moses like be overwhelmed and burn out and all of this stuff. And, and the people's needs were not being taken care of. And you're talking like over a million uh, Israelites. And um, Jethro comes to Moses and said, Moses, what are you doing? You know, trying to take care of the needs of these people all by yourself. If you keep this up, you're going to burn out. You're going to wear yourself out. And um, uh, Jethro gives him some really good advice. He says, uh, what you need to do is you need to change what you're doing, change the structure of what you're doing. And basically he says, you know, if we were to put it in modern day business language, he says, you need an executive pastor. You need an executive assistant. Yeah. You need some other pastors under you. And he uses the words rulers of a thousand, rulers of a hundred, rulers of 50, rulers of 10, based on their capacity to lead. And we see the same thing taken uh, over in Acts chapter 6, where the church was growing and there arose this complaint among the, among the, the Greek-speaking Jews that were saying, hey, look, the, the needs of the widows are not being met. So again, there was that complaint of the needs of the people were not being met. So sometimes it's a good thing when there's some noise and there's some, mm -hmm. quote, complaining, not, mm -hmm. not bad complaining, but just recognizing that there are needs not being met. So what, what, what was the answer there in Acts chapter 6? The answer was the same as it was in Exodus 18. Choose seven men full of faith and wisdom who can help take care of the needs of the people. And then what did the, the apostles say? They said, but we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and to prayer. And after they did that, after they changed the structure, I love this verse, Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, and the disciples multiplied. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened in Exodus 18. And the people uh, were at peace. Moses was at peace. Everything began to go well. And so that's why we're here today. Um, I'm, I, I just believe that we should expand the capacity of what we're trying to do here at New Life. So I wanted to just, just a simple illustration here. Um, you see this pitcher of water here on the table. You see, uh, let's just call this small church, medium size, <laughs> and large church. So in a small church, you know, you, you're, you're growing and you, you've got 75, 100 people. And if I kept pouring water, of course, I'd get water all over the floor and I don't want to do that. So I need to do what? I need to increase the size of the cup to hold more water that the Holy Spirit is pouring out, which is people and his spirit and everything that's going on at the church. Well, so a church of 75, 100 people, a church of, you know, a couple of hundred people, and then you keep growing and 
and you keep just growing larger and larger. So what do you have to do? You have to change the size of the capacity of your container to hold more water. In the same way, it's, it's, it's true in the church world. We grow from being 75 to 100 people uh, to a, a couple of hundred people, and everything changes. Uh, not everybody knows everybody. Uh, the pastor can't go to every hospital visit when you're a couple of hundred people. Then, especially when you go to four, five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred people, certainly can't do the same things then that, that you did when you were in a church of a hundred or two hundred. So everything just keeps expanding and you have to keep adding uh, staff members to facilitate the growth. So guys, that's what I'm excited about. Pastor Andrew, Kathy, um, it is a joy to already, I can just tell you guys, in three weeks' time, I have felt the load kind of come off of my shoulders, and I'm so thankful that you're here. So let's start with Kathy. Kathy is our executive assistant, and I just wanted her to talk a little bit about, you know, what your role is, Kathy, and, and basically what we brought you on to do. Great. Um, I feel like what Pastor just said about um, taking the weight off his shoulders was intentionally my goal because what happens is is he's trying to make all of the decisions. He's trying to hear all of the requests. He's trying to deal with all of the people, and he wants to do such a phenomenal job, but he doesn't have time or the capacity Correct. to reach all of those people. So when in that in that thought process, what I'm doing as an assistant is I'm helping make decisions. I'm helping lay out a process that we know what the answers are. So That's the right. systems are being put in place for how do we handle somebody new walking in the building how do we handle life groups what do we do with life group leaders now pastor dave does not have to make those decisions liz does not have to come in on every process because now we know the plan then we just execute so i become that executor of those decisions and i also set those systems in place and have them in a, a general area where all of the staff knows what the decision is and they can make decisions very, very educated. They know what they're supposed to do. They do not have to go to Pastor Dave's office for every decision. Yeah. So systems are important. The more people you have, it's much like in the business world, you have to have a plan or people will get missed. Yeah. And we definitely care about everyone walking in the doors of new life and we want them well taken care of as well as staffing being able to do what they know they're capable of doing without making small decisions along the way because they know the plan and so just to That's lift right. your yeah. arms and, yeah. and help that process and systems yeah and, and, and the other thing kathy that i noticed that your your gifting is in and you're doing such a great job also is in the area of just coaching things and mm -hmm. and take uh, taking teaching moments with each and every staff member and kind of speaking into things that that you can see hey maybe we could do this better and, mm -hmm. and from so you come out of the corporate world and you come into to the church world um, how tell me how that's you know how that works how, how's that going oh wow so the corporate world, I, I, for a little information, I came from a place where I was running 42 clinics and I was running policies and coaching team members and you know educating them on, on how to do their job well in customer service. And I kind of have brought that into the church and, and what I feel like is my stress is less because the purpose is different. And, and I feel like, and I, although I did my job That's unto good. the Lord, now I have the opportunity to actually speak my beliefs where in the corporate world, you don't often have that opportunity. Yeah. So now I can coach and I can uh, come alongside people yeah. and I can do that for the church, but I also can bring in some of those ideas from the corporate world that helps you run huge That's companies. Right. It's the same with the church. The yeah. bigger you get, you have to have a plan yeah. or people will get missed and we want everyone included. I, and I think what gets lost is um, right. people, People know that the church is a living organism. It is. It's a, it's a movement. It's a body. Mm -hmm. right. But it is also an organization. Exactly. You obviously have to have order. You have to have structure. Right. You have to have these systems. That um, It's not that we were lacking the systems. Not at all. But, but, but the systems weren't being managed well because I just ran out of gas as we were growing and and so i needed somebody like yourself and pastor andrew to come in and help to organize and help me run those systems you told me something um that really has stuck with me about um now you're doing 
what you feel God called you to do like many years ago. I probably didn't say it as well as yes. you said it. But when, when I was a teenager, I, I felt uh, I was so sure that I was going to be in a coaching role of helping people live a better story before I even knew that that was, yeah. that was yeah. new life. Cool? So, so, you yeah. know, at the age yeah. of 13, I told the Lord, I'll do anything you ask just to help people see that they can do things better, that they can be better, that there's more out there. Yeah. And so all of these years later, I believe in Joseph's story where if we manage our stories well, then the Lord can take that story and be able to use that to raise up others or to come alongside others. And so when I was brought on here, I feel like the calling I felt at 13 mm -hmm. is now in place, much like Joseph, where he was sold into slavery young, but his real purpose came after all of the story right. yeah. and was able to then lead his family, yeah. lead the nations, do, do what he did. And so I don't feel like that I was called at 13 and then it was rejected. I was called at 13, God needed my story to put me at this place Absolutely. to be able to do what he had on my heart and on his, you know, what his plan for me, but it was in my heart at like 13 years old. Right, right. Pastor Andrew, I am so thrilled that you're part of the team here, you and Maria and um, man, you, you also have been a, uh, blessing in the sense of you've taken uh, things off of my shoulders also and um, we're just so glad to have you on staff tell tell us a little bit about what um, you're going to be helping you already are doing it but what you're going to be helping us do yeah so when I think of the role uh, of executive pastor I think of it as someone who carries the heart of the senior pastor uh. to the team uh, whether that be the staff, whether that be the congregation, um, but that I understand the heart of uh, Pastor Dave and, and Liz and, and, and the board and, and the vision of New Life Church, and I can communicate that uh, to the staff to help them grow. Um, I think of it almost as, as like Aaron and her, whatever they held yes. up, held yeah, up the hand. That's a great example. Um, and <laughs> really I feel good. like uh, I'm doing more of the pastoral side. Uh, and Are you Aaron doing, and she's her? No. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but, but she's doing more of the system process side and working together on that. But, yeah. um, you know, we can only grow as far as we can expand to be flexible and mm. be adaptable. And as, as great of a pastor as you are, uh, you have so much vision, and we're so thankful for that. I know New Life Church is, is full of vision, and that's because of you. But if you continue to put out ideas and put out vision, and they're all God things, and you don't have somebody or people to come mm -hmm. alongside and say, uh, this is how we can get it done and communicate that to, to the teams and to the structure and to yeah. the staff and say, we've got to get better in these areas to make that vision come to pass, then it'll fail. Uh, and so I, I feel like my role is to be that liaison to carry the pastor's heart to the team yeah. in every area of ministry, uh, to the people and say, this is the pastor's heart. Yeah communicate that well to people and to raise the level of leaders in the house. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that uh, I'm going to be doing is leadership development and uh, caring for people. We never want to get so big that we quit producing leaders and we uh, outgrow our span of care. Yeah, that's Every good. single person at yeah. New Life in, uh, Church is important and we want to know that as the vision grows, as the people uh, grow, as, as, the, as the church grows even numerically, that we have a system and we have pastors here that are caring for our people. Uh, as well as developing them, uh, not not everybody is going to get a meal with the pastor, and that's okay because we have staff yeah. staff around and we have leaders around. I, I hear Pastor Lincoln you. likes to eat a lot. He yeah. does, right? <laughs> uh, but but that's okay uh, because because you're a wise leader understands to put people around them to help carry mm. that load. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I just look at at it as an executive pastor really is there to communicate the heart. Um, to the people from that from that pastor to the staff to the congregation and to to lighten the load and say hey guys this is how we can be effective and it is my job to say we can do it pastor and this is how we're going to get it mm. done and that's going to make mm -hmm. our pastor you uh. better at being a visionary being a preacher being a teacher uh caring and and helping uh the vision that god has given you go to the next level yeah that's cool it sounds like I mean, that right out of the Bible right yeah. there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer while others are, are quote, waiting on tables, taking care yes. of the needs and so mm -hmm. forth. I'm so thankful for 
all of our staff that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, we laugh about it all the time because we, we have such unique, um, uh, not, not <laughs> the unique, yeah, yeah, it is unique, uh, unique personalities mm -hmm. yeah. that, that are all on our staff. Um, some are, you know, like myself, type A personalities, you know, just uh, going after it all the time, visionary kind of uh, goal-oriented, task-oriented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we have others that are um, processors, you know, they have to think things through, and we need that. Mm -hmm. We have others that are like, you know, executors, and they just, boom, they get the thing done real quick. And then, and then there are others that are, you know, sort of the, the, the uh, bean counters. They, they, they have to just, uh, to, you know, think things through and, 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 and take time to, to do those things. So um, I, I love the, the team that God's given us here, and I just uh, see nothing but, but upward movement mm -hmm. for New Life Church. Yeah. Tell me, how, I mean, tell me how, how you feel about it. What, what do you see in our future? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I just see, um, for me personally, coming in here, first of all, New Life will just live a better story. Yeah. Individuals will live a better story. The church That's as right. a whole will live a better story. And what I mean by live a better story is we're doing what the what the Bible asks us to do. The gospel is reaching the community. We are bringing others in. So living a better story should affect those around us, yeah. not That's just right. our building. Mm -hmm. And so I see us getting out into the community more. And I yeah. see the ability to have teams that are reaching locally. And we already have a great missions program, but mm -hmm. we have people around us that need us. Correct. And so being able to be more effective in our community and bringing others in that haven't heard the you know the name yeah. of Jesus or yeah. haven't been in a church building right, right so I just see us expanding in that capacity because now you have the ability to think bigger think broader and you Correct. have the hands to do it yeah pastor Andrew what do you see in our future I see you know we have these great values that make new life church who we are and this change in structure, even in staffing and adding people to the, to the team is only going to allow us to execute those things of who we are at a greater level. So when we talk about excellence of ministry, we're mm -hmm. going to allow ourselves to be even better so that that excellence can only grow more to reach more people. When we talk about authentic community, we now have, you know, people that can help grow the life group leaders to even be better life group leaders, to, to, to grow us uh, all the different areas. And so I think uh, those values that we see, those, those things that are intangibles, that when people walk in and say, I feel it, yeah. uh, although the structure is changing, those things aren't going to change. They're only going to grow and get better. And I think that um, there are hundreds and thousands of stories that are going to be changed for the better wow. mm -hmm. uh, as new life continues yes. to expand and grow and change even in the structure. Uh, but uh, I think people are going to say, hey, this is who we are and we see it even more. Yeah. And again, my my vision, uh, I've, I've laid it out since we've been here, is that New Life Church is a multicultural, multiracial, right. multigenerational. Those yes. are some big words. Yeah. yeah especially for Poland, Ohio. Come on now. Uh -huh. uh, multicultural, multiracial. Isn't it wonderful to see the, the different ethnicities that are coming into this house? Mm -hmm. um, and a multi-generational. I love our older people that mix with our younger people yes. and in the in-between, all of those things that is reaching this yeah. region with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And of That's course, right. it comes down to what our mission is. Mm -hmm. We want to love God. We want to lead people to live a better story. That's and right. that's what that's we're right. all about. That's so, right. guys, thank you for uh, being part of this video today and sharing what your roles are. And, and hopefully we brought some clarity to you guys in, um, uh, in the role of, a, of an executive assistant and what an executive pastor does. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I was telling some folks last night, now all I, all I have to do is just sit around, drink coffee all day, and hope somebody calls me. <laughs> no, it's not like that. No, no. We're, but but I am, I'm so thankful, and I appreciate you all listening to this, and uh, we hope you have a great weekend. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you.